Good Sunday morning. Good to see all of you on this beautiful late June Sunday morning on this Lord's Sunday. want to welcome all of you who are here in the house, and if you're worshiping from online, we say howdy and welcome. Just a couple of announcements. Um, next week, I'm going to be out of town uh, on Sunday morning, uh, but stepping into the pulpit will be Mr. Bill Collins. And I spoke with Bill this past week about his sermon, and I am very sorry I'm not going to be here. Um, so if you haven't yet made plans to be in worship next Sunday, I do hope you will. Bill's got a very um, powerful sermon to offer next week. Speaking of things that are coming up in July, we've got our Vacation Bible School that's coming up. Uh, Tammy, do you want to have anything said about Vacation Bible School? I think there's a microphone right there. Yeah, if Will asks me, do you want to talk about Vacation Bible School? Yes. Yes, so Vacation Bible School will be held here at Rocky Mount UMC uh, July 18th through the 21st. Um, And I'll probably be talking about this the next uh, several weeks because we are gearing up. July is almost here. The one thing I do want to bring attention to is that several of you have said, what can I donate? Like, I've got all kinds of water stuff. The theme this year is making waves. Um, So you can get my wish list of of items I would love to to borrow for the week, but also just different arts and craft items. Um, That list, um, I've got some copies are out near the bulletins, um, so you can pick that up as you leave. Um, You can also get it on the VBS page of our website um, if that's how you'd like to get it. Um, And I'll just be updating that list as stuff comes in. I would love, love, love to have like a really cool like Jeep Wrangler kind of thing or like if anyone has a VW Microbus, that would be amazing. So that is like my <laughs> my one big decor. Um, but the last time we did this, if you remember a few years ago, we did Giddy Up Junction. It was a ranch theme. Y'all just gave me all of your Western and horse gear. This place was amazing. It was so fun. Um, and I know that with all the kayaking and the canoeing and the life jackets and all of that stuff, that there's got to be all kinds of things. Um, so you can donate that down um, in the fellowship hall. You'll already see some of my stuff is down there. Um, and you can drop that off either on Sundays or during office hours. So thank you. Thank you, Tammy. Uh, speaking of things that are coming up, on Tuesday at noon, the Sunshine Girls are going to be having lunch at Ippy's. And I asked uh, one of the leaders of the Sunshine Girls, what is a Sunshine Girl? And she said, it is a girl. So if you are a girl, uh, whether you've been to Florida or not, you are welcome to attend Ippies at lunch. There's eating food, so that sounds marvelous. Um, Lastly, speaking about food, on the uh, 10th of this month, which is in a couple of Sundays, we're going to be having a fellowship meal after the service. And this is really neat because it's a birthday fellowship meal. Uh, who here has a birthday? <laughs> Kevin, you, do you don't have a birthday, man? Okay, he has one. All right, so if you have a birthday, you can attend this event, uh, and you're going to sit at the tables designated by your birth month. So you'll get a chance to meet other uh, folks from February, or if you're a real cool person, July. And uh, I just think that sounds like a lot of fun. They just ask our United Women of Faith ask that you bring a side to share. You'll have meats and uh, birthday cakes for all the tables. So that'll be coming up in a couple of weeks after the service. Are there any other announcements that we want to... Yes, ma'am. And do you know what time that dedication is? 10 o'clock. Okay. All right. So that is a a request um, for the dedication of a trail at Celeste Park. It's the one um, just down from the harvester. Uh, So that sounds like a great opportunity to celebrate Shirley and Sonny uh, uh, posthumously. Uh, Any other announcements? Um, I will announce this. Lynn is back from her music uh, week down at Lake Junaluska. So if she's like cranking that organ louder than usual, it's because she is fired up. It's good to see you, and welcome back, Lynn, after your week away. Uh, Now let us prepare our hearts and minds as we worship the Lord.
rise for the call to worship in the hymn of praise. Come, let us worship. We give thanks to you, O Lord our God, and we will glorify your name forever. For your love is great towards us. We are merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Amen. Our hymn of praise is page 110, A Mighty Portraits of Our God.
Thank you. You may be seated and the children may come forward at this time. this morning. All right, so I have something really cool today. Um, I have a really fancy lie detector machine. Do you see it? Do y'all know what a lie detector machine is? What's a lie detector machine? Yeah, tell, yeah it tells the truth, right? So if you're telling the truth, it'll say, um, uh, if you're telling the truth, what it'll do is it'll say whether or not this is true or it's a lie. So, so let's start and see if it works for me, okay? All right, uh, all right, very good. Okay, so uh, let's switch hands because I make it work. There we go. All right, so I like pizza. Do you think that's true or false? Very good. All right, so green is true. All right, I like pizza with pepperoni. Do you think that's true? Yeah, absolutely. I like Hawaiian pizza. Do you know what that is? That's ham and pepperoni. Ugh. Gross. Gross. <laughs> All right. So let's try it with you guys. All right. Tell me something, and we'll see if the machine knows whether or not it's true or not. Tell me, tell me something about yourself. What's that? You love all the colors? Oh, avocados? I'm sorry. Wait, do you love avocados? Oh, this is a tricky one. Yes? Is it true? All right. It works. It works. What about you? Your favorite color is blue. All right. Excellent. All right. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So the reason why I made this really fancy and really elaborate lie detector machine is because today we're going to talk in church about lies and why we shouldn't tell them. Um, one of the scriptures in our Bible says this. It's in Proverbs. It says, um, the Lord detests or hates lying, but he delights in or he loves people who are trustworthy. Um, one of the problems when we lie is then we have to tell another lie. Like, for instance, um, when you go to school and you tell your teacher, oh, my dog ate my homework. You ever, ever heard about that? My dog ate my homework? All right, that's a lie, okay? And your teacher says, well, what kind of dog do you have? And what if you don't have a dog? Then you have to make up another lie. You say, uh, German Shepherd. Oh, that's a lie. And then your teacher says, well, I'll call your mom and ask how your dog's doing after eating all that homework. And then you say, uh, mom's out of town and didn't take her cell phone with her, you know. Pizza sauce and tomatoes. Yeah, that's a, that's a good thing, right? <laughs> um, so uh, one lie goes on to another lie, goes on to another lie. But when you tell the truth, you don't have to remember what you said, because it's just the truth. So today, let's think about that when we talk to mom and dad and our brothers and sisters and our family, that we need to tell the truth. God wants us to tell the truth. Okay, let's pray together. And re repeat after me. Thank you, God, for giving us the example in your word of telling the truth. Help us tell the truth in all that we do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you guys for being great listeners. You're welcome to head on up to Children's Church. Today's scripture lesson, the first one is Exodus 20, 16, and that is on page 64 in your pew Bibles. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. 
The second one is Ephesians 4, 14, 16, which is in the New Testament. We, not, we must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped. As each body is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building life up in love. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Becky. Let us bow our heads and pray. Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. You're our rock and you're our redeemer. Amen. Uh, this past week, uh, my wife and I hosted my little niece and nephew for some s'mores time at uh, our campfire behind the house. Um, are any of you familiar with s'mores? S'mores? Okay. Uh, s'mores are a pretty simple thing. They're graham crackers, chocolate, and what's the other thing? Uh, lightly roasted and browned with a little bit of gooey but not dripping marshmallows. Okay? I see some heavy nodding over there. All right. So before we invited the little ones to the campfire, I did what seemed like an adult thing to do, which was give them a lecture. Because if there's anything kids want, it's a lecture. And I said these two things. I said, when we go by the campfire... Let us not flail our sharpened sticks like Lord of the Flies, okay? And secondly, if your marshmallow, I'm sorry, when your marshmallow becomes fully ablaze, don't wave it around. Let one of the adults blow it out. So they listened um, like 25% of that, and we went and started making s'mores. So... Why did I give them this lecture? Well, two reasons. One, I wanted them to experience one of the clearest examples that there is a God and God loves us, and that is through the gift of s'mores. They are a divine gift to us all. The other reason why I gave them this lecture was I didn't want them to be cyclopses, right? I didn't want to be poked in the eye, and I didn't want them to catch the woods on fire, flailing a burnt marshmallow into the pine straw. I wanted them to know the grace that comes to us through a lightly browned but not dripping marshmallow. And I also wanted to ensure that they didn't get hurt. Um, I know, you know, we all know, kids and fire are not a good mix, right? If, if you, for instance, if you had a, a, a fire in, say, your master bathroom, say your wooden uh, bathtub lit on fire, <laughs> and you call the fire department, and they come, woo, 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 and they roll on up, right, and they step on off of the fire truck, and it's a bunch of five-year-olds, you're going to call your insurance agent and say the house was a complete loss, right? Okay. Kids and fire don't do well together, so I wanted to make sure that as they got near the fire, that they were safe. I wanted to make sure, church, I wanted to make sure that they experienced one of the clearest examples that there is a God and that he loves us. It is through a lightly browned, but not dripping, marshmallow, and I also want to make sure they didn't burn themselves. This commandment, number nine, is a grace-filled commandment but it is also a warning to us. Of course, I'm talking about you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Now, uh, as we understand this commandment, we should start at the most basic level. What is this commandment uh, at its most basic level talking about? At its most basic level, it's talking about you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor in court. It's about 
um, ensuring that the judicial system stands up based on truth. So at its most basic level, it's about not giving false witness while on the witness stand. If that's all you hear in the sermon, you're really doing a disservice to the ninth commandment. If you, after this point, check out because you, one, haven't ever been in a court case, or two, in the court case you were in, you were honest and truthful, so now you can start working on your shopping list and tune this whole thing out. You're going to miss a lot here. So hold on. All right, by a show of hands, how many of you have had someone bear false witness about you? Before you answer, any of you all ever have someone bear false witness as a brother or a sister? Say in the back seat of a car when your brother or your sister said you did something that you most certainly didn't do? Anybody ever been in a relationship where the other person said you did something so that they could feel better about how bad they've been feeling? Or maybe you've been involved in a work setting where they said something about you that was blatantly uh, false so that they could perhaps jump you on that corporate ladder? Anybody ever had someone bear false witness about them? Okay. So I'm assuming that that's not just in a court case, but it's across the span of life. It happens frequently. Uh, One of my best friends in all the world is a prosecutor in Cincinnati, Ohio. And she prosecutes the worst of the worst in our culture. Murderers and rapists throughout the city of Cincinnati. I texted her this past week because she's been involved in hundreds of criminal court cases. And I said, Amanda, what percentage of people would you say in the witness stand lie? And she said, about 10%. 10%. And then I asked her another question. I said, okay, what percentage of people in the witness stand exaggerate the truth? And she said, oh, that's at least 70 or 80%. I asked her, how how can you tell if if they're lying? And she said, well, based on other witness testimony and the forensic evidence that we are given. So if it is, at the very least, 10% of people, or at the very worst, 80% of people exaggerating the truth, that's going to have major consequences throughout the entire judicial system. People who are falsely accused can end up in prison for the rest of their life, or those falsely accused could even be executed. Uh, This past week, I was reading about the former governor of the state of Illinois. His name was George Ryan. He was the governor back in the late 90s, early 2000s. And when he first became governor, he believed that capital punishment was a good thing for his state. In his first couple of weeks and months there, he was given a request for clemency, and he denied it, and a person was executed. Uh, Flash forward a couple more years, and Anthony Porter was the gentleman's name. He was exonerated after 18 years of being on death row for a double murder that he did not commit. George Ryan was struck by this exoneration. And so in his final months of being the governor of Illinois, he began to talk to his staff, what would it look like if we gave clemency or if we lowered the punishment for these death row inmates to life in prison? And on one of his last days in office, that's what he did. He took all the people who were on death row in the state of Illinois and gave them at least life in prison. And he said this, our capital system is haunted by the demon of error, error in determining guilt and error in determining who among the guilty deserves to die. He took very seriously the possibility that there might be someone his state executed and did it wrongly. God wants for us to be truth tellers truth tellers. And he places a great priority on the truth and the giving of the law. So the law in the Old Testament is built upon this pillar of truth. So 
Here's what would happen if I gave false testimony and was found out to have been lying. Say you, uh, Bill, were stealing at a market. You stole an apple. And I claimed uh, that, you, that you stole this apple. And it was found out that I was making false testimony. The punishment would have been for you if it was true. Your hand would be cut off where you stole the apple. That punishment that would have been meted out to you would in fact be meted out to me. So if I gave a false testimony in saying that you murdered someone and it was found out to be false, I would what? I would be killed. In Deuteronomy chapter 19 it says, if the witness proves to be a liar, giving false testimony against a fellow Israelite, then do to the false witness as that witness intended to do to the other party. You must purge the evil from among you. Truth matters to God. So if you're accusing someone of being a murderer and you were proven a liar, you would be killed. Because without truth, the whole judicial system begins to crumble. Lies are extremely dangerous. Um, A couple weeks ago, I attended uh, the graduation of my niece in Georgia. And on our way back, it was just Zeke and I, we stopped at a lake on the Georgia-South Carolina border. Uh, we stopped at this lake, and we got ourselves all ready. We got our swimming trunks on. I put on his um, water wings, I think they call them. Got his uh, swimming trunks on, sunscreen. We were set. So we took off, went down to the beach, and just had a blast playing in the water. We had a lot of fun. Um, but, but can I be honest with you? I guess, I guess that makes sense in an honesty sermon. <laughs> I got a little bored. I mean, it's fun playing, but, you know, I got a little bored, the splashing. It got a little tiresome. So I went and took a seat on the beach, and I just started looking at the, at the boats on the water. He had his water wings on. He was playing happily. He was less than 20 feet away from me, and it's at that very moment My little Ezekiel begins to holler, I'm drowning, I'm drowning. (laughs) The Coast Guard, the Sheriff's Department, I think the Salvation Army showed up, all right? He did it no less than 20 times. I'm drowning. No, you're not. I'm drowning. No, you're not. I'm drowning. No, you're not. (laughs) What a cute age, three. What a cute age. Truth-telling matters, and lies have extreme consequences. Um, I want to think today about some of the ways lies crop up in our culture. Um, One of the ways that uh, lies crop up is when people don't tell the truth who are running for office. Um, When the established leadership chooses to deliberately misrepresent the true state of our country, When they choose to misrepresent how things really are, they may be trying to use the dysfunction to give people the false assurance that it's better than it is. Um, So you get things like half-truths or spin. Half-truths or spin. Let me give you a couple examples of half-truths or spin. Uh, Say a daughter comes up to her mom and says, uh, Mom, can I go to the party? Teenage girl, can I go to the party? And the mom says, well, have you asked your father? And the daughter says, of course. And then the mom says, okay, then. What did she do? She played the truth. So, yes, she had had talked to her father, but she hadn't talked to her father about going to the party. Or say your child walks into the house, and they say, The neighbor hit me, but the child leaves out the fact that they hit the neighbor first, (laughs) right? Do you see how half-truths work or spin? Uh, I'll give you another example. Once uh, Buddy and I were moving a table, a glass-top table, out from a truck into another house. My dad had sent me on this task to do it. And so my buddy and I went, and uh, we were getting it off of the truck And rather than taking the glass top off and carrying it in alone, we took the whole thing off, right? So we took the whole thing off, and it began to slip. 
Have y'all ever had those moments when time just goes very slowly, right? Maybe this sermon is one of those moments. <laughs> and and you just, you're, you're reaching for it, but you're not going to get it. And it just slips and slips and slips and shatters into 1,347,832 pieces, right? And my buddy and I look at each other, and we're both hoping that time will suddenly go in reverse, right? <laughs> and so we go back, after standing there for 30 minutes, uh, we go back down to the house, and my dad asked, did you move the table? I said, yeah, it, it was moved. <laughs> See the half-truth there? We moved it into one million, a million pieces, Half-truths are closer to real lies. Uh, During political campaigns, we may not hear out-and-out lies, but we certainly hear misrepresentations of the truth, where people try and give a version of the truth that benefits their side versus the other side. I mean, I can't be the only person here who despises October, right? Sure. I love looking at red, orange, and yellow tree leaves, right? Great stuff. I love acting like a shark when it comes to Granny Smith's apples and just trying to chomp them inside a big barrel. Y'all ever done that? Bobbing for apples? I love it when the Braves win the World Series. Go Braves, right? When October rolls around, what are the commercials? They're slam pieces. They're attack ads. I mean, why can't it be, this is the fact, and this is why I think I'm the best candidate for the job? And and to be frank with you, church, I'm not naive to think that in 2022, when our congressional elections come around again, that Bob Good and the Democrat running aren't going to start slamming at each other and attacking each other. But I do believe that of the 200-some-odd members of this church and those who regularly attend it, that we can be more diligent about what we share on social media. When I push that share button or that retweet button, I am saying I am placing my self behind this and stating it as fact. But what if we as a church dedicated our time in October to say, I want to vet this first. I want, to, I want to go and check to see if this is true or not before I click share, before I send that email, before I tweet that out. I believe that's possible for us. That when I send it, I am saying, this is my name that I'm putting out there. Okay, last one I want to offer and then uh, close up the sermon. Um, lies can look like exaggeration. Lies can look like exaggeration. Uh, just last Friday... I think Congress passed and Biden signed a big gun, uh, gun legislation. But in leading up to that gun legislation, uh, one of the members of uh, the Democrats went on to CNN. His name is Jamie Raskin, and he was trying to promote the bill. Let me read to you what he said on CNN June 12th. Okay. Uh, America is suffering a massacre pretty much every day now. There have been more massacres than days in 2022. So the House has been pushing for far more sleeping action for universal violent criminal background checks. Uh, The host said, this is a baby step you want to vote on? It's moving in the right direction, said Raskin. We're glad that the Senate is finally awake about this. Okay, so he said on June 12th that there have been more massacres than days in 2022. June 12th was the 163rd day of this year. So what he is saying, what he said was that there were at least 164 gun massacres at that point in the year. Okay? According to factcheck.org, when they reached out to Raskin's office, this is what Raskin's office said. As you know, a massacre is defined in one important sense as an act of complete destruction which captures the horrific damage caused by mass shootings to both victims who die and their families and communities 
and victims who are seriously wounded and injured in their families and communities. Okay, those who were watching CNN that day would have been left with the impression that there were at least 164 gun massacres up to that point in 2022. But according to the Gun Violence Archive, there had been just 267 mass shootings, but only 100 of them had at least, or had just one death, and 101 of them did not have any deaths. Okay, all that math aside, what Raskin was trying to do, and admittedly what we try and do, is exaggerate the truth so it fits the narrative that we subscribe to. So, so why are we talking about this? Why are we talking about lies in court or half-truths or spin or exaggeration? We talk about it because when we lie, we are not loving our neighbor as we love ourselves. So, so when I stand up here, church, and I pray the prayer, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, you are our rock and our redeemer. I'm not trying to wave some magic wand over what is said. Instead, I'm, I'm asking God to let these words be your words and to push me aside so that you would step forward and your truth and your word would come through me. Because this pulpit is powerful. And I take that seriously, stepping into this place. And while you may not stand behind this with much regularity, you stand behind a pulpit and people are listening to what you have to say. Let me tell you, the number one reason people step away from church is because of hypocrisy. And so when you say something and do the other, people say, well, I don't, I don't know that that person really believes what they say they believe. Paul says this. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love. We must, must, must grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. By the words that you say, you have the opportunity to tear down or to build up. Do you remember a few years ago we talked about dirty words? Throughout that sermon series, we were speaking... This word from the Bible, let no evil talk come from your mouth, but only what is useful for building up as there is need. Let no evil talk come from your mouth, but only what is useful for building up. You have the opportunity to build up. You also have the opportunity to tear down. Um, I'm going to close with this story. Um, St. Philip Neri was a, um, was a priest in Florence, and then in Rome back in the 16th century. And the story goes that a woman came to him for confession one day. This woman was the town gossip. She would say all manner of evil all the time. And she came to the confession box and said, Father, forgive me for I have sinned. And he said, what is the sin that you come to confess, my child? And she said, "Eh, gossiping. And uh, Neri could tell that she wasn't taking it very seriously, was just doing it because it's what you do. And he said, well, here's what you're going to do. For penance, I want you to climb to the tallest point here in the church. But before you do, I want you to take your pillow. I want you to take your pillow from your your house. You've got a feather pillow, right? He said, said, yeah, I do. And um, what I want you to do is I want you to take the feathers out and climb, take the pillow, climb to the tallest part of the church, right? And I want you to, have you ever heard the story? So I want you to take and throw the feathers off the top of the church, OK? 
Okay? She thought, well, that's a little weird, but I guess I'll do it, right? So she climbs on up, gets the top part of the church, takes her feather pillow, and just throws it out, every little bit of it. She just, just goes to town on it, right? Our medical insurance is really good. Don't worry about it. All right. All right. Throws it out. Climbs on down off the top. Next day, she goes to confession. Priest says, uh, what is it, my child? She says, I- I'm here to confess. What did you come to confess? I come to confess that I'm a gossip. I said, well, what have you done about it? She said, well, I climbed on up to the top of the church, took my pillow, threw the feathers out. I said, very good. She said, uh, am I forgiven? She, he said, no, there's one more thing I need you to do. She said, what's that? I need you to take your pillowcase and get every last feather and put it back in. Suddenly, the conviction came over her face. Our words matter. We can't get them back. But what we can do, we can listen to God's word where it says that we shall not bear false witness against our neighbor, that we can use our words to build up. May our church be an example of people who take seriously that commandment. Let's pray. And if you would, church, um, sometimes it helps me as I'm, as I'm praying to, to hold my hands out like this, like I'm receiving something. And I want you, as you pray today, church, to acknowledge that we've all, we've all told lies and misrepresented the truth. As a body, I just, I, I'm praying, Lord, that, that you would receive our, our true acknowledgement that we've, we've done this. We lay before you the lies that we've told and the misrepresentations of the truth we've given. And we ask, Lord, that you would forgive us of our sins. Father, I also pray for my sisters and my brothers who are we're yearning for transfer, transformation in this part of their life. I pray, Lord, that you will change their hearts, you will change their minds, you will change the way that they are in the world, so that others would see their good works and praise you who is in heaven. Father, make us, mold us, and transform us into the likeness of Christ. This I pray in his most precious name. Amen. As the ushers come forward, may we offer to the Lord our tithe and our offering.
Heavenly Father, we praise you with our lips, we praise you with our minds, and we praise you, Lord, with these gifts. We pray, Lord, that you will use them for your glory, your namesake, your transformational power throughout this community and across the globe. This we ask in your Son's most precious name of Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. Some of you know that I like to fish, and even though lately I've been doing some pond fishing, I'd rather stand in a stream and feel the moving water. And I often think, no matter how many drops of water go by, there's always more. God's love is the same way. God's love is like a river, forever and forever. And that's the main theme of this song. Unending love, amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised good to me. His word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. My chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace, my chains are gone. My God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow, the sun forbear to shine, but God who called me here below will be forever mine. 
will be forever mine. You are forever mine. As always, thank you, Don your willingness to talk about the everlasting love of our Father through Jesus' Son. Thank you. Um, as we head into our time of prayer, I want to lift up um, some prayer requests. Luann, you had emailed me this week um, about one of our persons we've been praying for, little buddy Cotter. Um, he had had a heart transplant, and he has now returned home. Um, so we're just thankful for the doctors and nurses who were able to perform that procedure for him and um, for the ones who are willing to offer up their child's heart so that he could live. Um, so I'm sharing that with you as we uh, enter into a time of prayer. I also want to be in, prayer, in prayers for Jay Dillon. Jay Dillon is Arnold Dillon's brother. and Jay has had a stroke and is in the hospital at Roanoke. Um, so on behalf of the Dillon family, we want to be in prayer for them. Um, I also recognize that today's probably a pretty fraught day for many of us um, after the Roe v. Wade decision on Friday. And I just recognize that one of the things that I've loved most about our church is how diverse we are. Um, we're diverse socially, politically, economically. Um, I'd imagine that many of us are diverse socially as well. And uh, there are Probably are people here who have had abortions. Uh, certainly we all know someone who has had one. Uh, so today as we worship together, we worship uh, together on a Sunday when many people are irate and full of rage. Some people are celebratory and full of exaltation. Um, but we're all within this great umbrella of Christianity. Um, so for those who mourn, I mourn alongside with you. Uh, for those who cheer, I cheer alongside of you as well. I, I think as a people of, of, um, of Christ, as the body of Christ, we can, should continue to advocate for women, uh, continue to advocate for their health, for their well-being, for their flourishment, um, for policies so that no person ever uh, has to go without health care. Um, today is a big day for our church and for our country. Uh, so let's hold all of that intention together and continue to pray for each other, um, for our Supreme Court, and for all of those who um, are majorly impacted by that decision um, cast down by the Supreme Court. Um, are there other prayers that we want to lift up today? Yes, sir. And what is his name? Uh, Steve, Cobb. Steve Cobb. Okay. Yes, sir. 51 years. Thank you for that and congratulations. Okay. Any others? Yes, sir. I need prayers for my son in law, Caleb. He is soon to be given his next set of orders, and okay. we want him to be local. Okay. Very local. All right. So uh, for those who don't know, Caleb is a, is a Navy yeah. sailor, and so they're down in Hampton Roads. We'll pray that it's uh, in Hampton Roads. Yes. Maybe even in, like, the Ferrum Calloway area. Yeah. The, the Great Navy of the Blackwater River. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, for, for Caleb Sheeler. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Congratulations to you and Glenda, and for uh, Miss Ramsey, we'll be in prayer for her. Okay. Any others? Anyone else married 51 years? Let's, let's do it again. Yes, ma'am. Hazel Henderson. She's been in and out of the hospital, um, but we'll continue to pray for Hazel. Thank you for that, Pat. Any others? Any silent prayers that we're lifting up this morning? Okay. 
Let's bow our heads as we go in prayer. Almighty God, we join together in bowing before you, acknowledging you as our God and we are your people. We are the sheep of your pasture. We are your flock and we, we look to you, Lord, for guidance and for wisdom in days that are most especially challenging. For some, Lord, today is challenging as we see uh, persons younger than we are struggling with health difficulties. We see siblings crushed under the weight of challenges in their body. We pray, God, for uh, sons-in-laws who are um, praying and hoping and wishing for a certain future that is at this time still uncertain. We pray, God, for moms and dads who are grappling with the pain of losing their child and moms and dads who are celebrating the joy of having their son home. Uh, Lord, we are praying in this hour for these persons that are represented by our hands lifted high. Father, we come to you with all of ourselves, with our joys and our concerns, our celebrations and our tragedies. And we acknowledge, Lord, that you can handle all of it. You can handle it when we are weeping to the point of falling down. You can handle it when we are celebrating and jumping for joy, Lord. You are our God and we are your people. Help us, Father, as we live amongst one another people carrying great weights and people liberated from them. Remind us, God, that each person has a purpose. Each person has a plan set in motion, Lord, that each person is a unique gift from you. Father, as we as a country seem to turn in on ourselves week after week, remind us, God, of the unifying power of the Holy Spirit. That even when we disagree, even when we disagree on the most fundamental issues, Lord, may we be united around the cross of Christ, the welcoming love of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray and I mourn, we celebrate and we weep. There is a time for all of that, Father. I ask, God, that you will give wisdom, continued wisdom to each and every one of those who have been elected, those who seek to be elected. Give them wisdom as they guide this country, help those who are in places of uh, the judicial system, may they discern your will and be guided by you in their, in their work and in their lives. And Father, for each and every one of us, we pray that you will use our words to lift up, not to tear down, that will build up, not to brutalize. We pray all of this, Lord, in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, the one who is and was and is to come, and the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, our closing hymn this morning is the battle hymn of the Republic. I'm going to invite you to sing verses 1, 3, and 5 as we stand and sing hymn 717. Please stand as you're able.
now this benediction. May the God of all hope be with you now and forevermore, all the days of your life. In the name of Christ, I pray. Amen.